First assignment tonight for referee Mark Goddard. The best in the business today. Three five-minute rounds if they need them. In the Cage Warriors lightweight division, Sean Shikari Fraser in the red. Tarek the Tsunami Pell in the black. Early takedown from Fraser and a good one. Inside the butterfly guard here. Trying to get back to full guard. Nice elbows from underneath into the full guard position. Pell just chopping away with those short elbows, giving Sean Fraser something to think about now. Looking to scramble, get his back on the cage. Pell doing a good job of getting some little shots in here and just giving his opponent something to think about as he tries to get his back to the mat, back to the feet here. Beautiful job removing that base leg. Trying to circle off the cage, but Fraser just too tight on him there. Oh, beautiful way to disguise the takedown behind the jab. I mean, Pell flipping through though. That was really nice. Uh, Fraser tried to jump over the guard as part of the takedown. He just overcommitted a little bit too much, and Pell was able to reverse him off of it. But Fraser still managing to maintain top position here and right in the center of the cage, which is just. You know, the best position you can really have someone if you want to grapple with them because it takes away their ability to, to use the fence to stand up, which is such a big part of the uh, the MMA grappling world. Looking for a Kimura there, but he's not going to have too much success back into the closed guard position. And I mean, the question here really is, does Frazier want to want to strike from here? In which case, yeah, you might want to drive forward and try and, you know, get his head against the fence to, to help you with some ground and pound. But... If you want to transition and you want to take away your opponent's main abilities to get back to the feet, this is the place to do it. Frazier throwing some ground and pound here. I think we might see Pell try and get back to... You can see how smothering Fraser is on top. He's very, very tight here. He's not giving any space. I think we might see Pell underneath try and transition into a, uh, ver a different variation of open guard. He might try and get the feet on the inside. And there we go, he, he does, and he tries to use this to stand, but he shows his back as he does so. And Fraser immediately taking advantage of this. Nice hand fighting from Pell there. But both hooks on the inside. Great position here. Pulls from his corner to flatten him out, but I think he's probably better off trying to roll onto his back and secure the position. And He's unable to do so and back to the feet. Beautiful stuff from Tarek Pell to get back to his feet there. And some fantastic exchanges early on in this one. Pell looking for that left hand. Didn't quite get it. I'm not sure if he clipped the top there or not, but bullies his man back to the floor very, very easily. Big open half guard there, but no intentions to pass. Just going to strike from this position. Pell now looking possibly for exposure on the back here. He's trying to possibly go for a head and arm choke. And in doing so, just gives a little bit too much space and a half butterfly position is regained. Sweep attempt underneath. Has to be careful about giving the back here. Tries to transition into a a pick up on that single leg and finds himself back on on his back in this uh, half butterfly position just a minute left in this round if, uh, if Pell could do some serious damage here at the end of the round he could well run away with it I mean I that's what the judges are looking for here who's who's doing the most damage who's making the bigger steps towards finishing the fight yeah he'd have to do some pretty serious damage on top here to, to, to negate uh, a bit of asymmetry in in the time spent on top and striking but back to the feet now 30 seconds left and they separate Pell disengages great grappling exchanges so far in this fight watch Pell's eyes here if you can he likes to look low and throw high oh, beautiful, beautiful catch of the kick and a trip from Sean Fraser
And some ground and pound to end the round from Shikori. What a fun fight this has been so far. I mean, this is what you get when you've got two Cage Warriors Academy amateur champs going at it. We know these guys are high-level competitors. I'm interested to look back and, and see if that left hand from Tarek Pell did yeah. clip Sean Fraser. And if you're interested in doing that too, you can do on UFC Fight Pass right after the show's ended tonight. Actually, watch UFC first, <laughs> then watch it back. Oh, the guys in the truck telling us they didn't actually land, so just a hair's breadth short. And they're already mixing it up here in the second round. Oh, beautiful. Capture the kick. He tries to take him down off of it, but Fraser does a fantastic job of trying to get, or almost getting back exposure there and attacking. Defended nicely, but some brutal ground and pound puts Pell back on his back. Back into the full guard position. And we've already seen Fraser spend a lot of time in here and, and even more active with the ground and pound than he was in the first round. Both of these guys looking a lot more active, a lot looser. Let's see what Tariq Pell can do off his back here in the second round. Miscontrol here, possible triangle attempt. It's all about hand placement on top. You've got to be careful. If you have an underhook inside of the guard position, your opponent underneath just has to get rid of one arm and the triangle is there. Nice step over pass into half guard position. And you can see the pressure on the, the right arm of Frazier on top. He's trying to stop his opponent from turning onto the side. He wants to keep him flat on his back. Pell's corner calling for an underhook on that, with that left arm. We saw him utilize that, and there he goes. Underhook taken, and he, he did something very similar in the first round, and, and, and beautifully timed there to get back to his feet. Coughing left hand from Fraser there. Oh, and an elbow, and an uppercut, and he looks like he has Terry Pell hurt here. Yeah, I think he might do. Fraser looking to finish the fight, Pell. Trying to duck and weave. Desperation shot here, but he's got a really nice entry on it and back in the top position. I mean, this isn't dissimilar to the first round where we had Frazier on top to begin with and fell on top. Pretty much bang on the halfway point of the round. A sit-up sweep attempted by Frazier off of his back. But now securely flattened out inside of the closed guard. Ben Cartledge, David Leatherby and Daryl Ransom, the judges tonight. And good luck to them. Pell is certainly looking the more tired of the two. Frazier has a butterfly hook on the inside. We could look for a sweep attempt here. When you're playing the butterfly guard, it's very difficult to sweep if you don't have any upper body control when you're flat on your back. It's why we don't see that much butterfly guard work in MMA, because generally when you're getting to the position, you're already flattened out. Whereas in grappling, a, a lot of the time you're in a more upright position. There's a lot more space inside of the guard in jiu-jitsu than there is in MMA. Pell trying to take the back, but Sean Fraser comes out from underneath him. Kick, kick, uh, clips him with that head kick on the way up as well. And Tarek's got some ground to make up here. Tries to land that oh. trademark left hand, but oh. Fraser landing left, right, any way you like. But in that scramble, Pell back on the back again. Does he have enough energy to actually do anything with this, though? That is the question. It looks like Fraser might have a Kimura from underneath here. I wonder if he's going to be able to actually utilize it. No, he doesn't. Finds himself on the back again. And Pell really does have a lot of work to do, and I think he's pretty fatigued at this point. The leg is wide open here. If I'm Pell, if I'm Pell's corner, I'm saying pass the mount and strike. I mean, we've seen Fraser give up the back position a couple of times in trying to defend and escape positions. I think that could be a nice entry for Pell. The question is, of course, does he have the energy to do it? Uh, and that's exactly what Pell's corner were saying. Okay. They want damage. They want ground and pound. Sean and Fraser telling him to bring it on and able to get back to his feet. Yeah, really nice use of that right wizard to stop the back take. 
as he stands up there. And a great level change as it's Fraser back in top position. I mean, one of the most back and forth uh, um, fights in terms of who's in top position on the ground that I've seen for a while. Fraser trying to finish big here. Doesn't manage to land anything too significant. That's the end of the second round, and we will see a third, ladies and gentlemen. As they were sitting in their respective corners during that round, or uh, in between that round. Body keep there from Fraser to open the round, and maybe he's going to start to look to invest in the body a little bit more. You've got to be guessing that it's Pell that needs to really push the action in this last round. I think he can expect to be two rounds down at this point. Fraser once again getting back to top position. And this is essentially where we've seen 90% of this fight so far, either one of them in this uh, closed guard position or half guard, but mainly in closed guard. And, and the way that Pell has escaped this position so far is actually getting to, to half guard and then using that near side underhook to, uh, to, to, to wrestle up back to his feet. So it'll be interesting to see if, if, if Frazier is able to pass to a half guard position if he's able to utilize that underhook again. Pell doing a great job again, staying busy from the bottom. So you can see that. I mean, back into half butterfly and, 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 and Pell actually working back. I couldn't tell whether he, he allowed that past the half butterfly or whether he... Uh, you know, if, if he did want to get to that position, there's no reason that he would have gone back into uh, full guard. And once again, we're in half guard now, so keep a close eye on the left arm of Pell underneath there. There the underhook comes, and he tries to wrestle up from that position, and he does so successfully. That's three times that he's done that. And most times that he's wrestled up, he has managed to make a scramble where he's been advantageous. Again, still using that left underhook. Great job from Pell to get back to the feet, but can he this? Oh, he tries to spin back elbow. He needs to do some damage here. I mean, nice burst of energy there from Pell. Oh, big right hand from the Tsunami. Could he be getting a second win now? Fires off the jab. And there's the shot from Fraser, and once again, successfully taking it to the mat. Again, I expect to see similar half guard position. I mean, he's been so, he's actually become more successful with this half guard uh, wrestle up position with that underhook as the fight's gone on. It's getting cleaner as Frazier's just a little bit slower to respond to it. So, butterfly guard position here. He pushes away, he turns a little bit. He's rolling through for a leg lock here. I mean, he's in a knee bar position. He's applying the knee bar here, and it looks like the... I mean, this this, this might actually be on. He's applying it and, and, and just manages to switch out of it. I wonder if he's going to try and switch into a heel hook from here. He does. I mean, very, very hard at this point in the fight. These guys are so slippery. It's all about that knee line. You see how uh, Frazier is pushing on the, on, on, on the back of uh, the glutes there. He's trying to pull his right knee past the hip. He's not looking in too much trouble here, and... You know, assuming that he's winning this fight on the scorecard, this might be quite a nice position for him to just chill out a little bit. Taking top position here. Pell is rolling through, trying to get on the legs, but he's going to give the back position. There's a, just over a minute and a half left in this fight. And I have a feeling that that attempt on that leg has taken out the remainder of the little energy that, that Pell had. Yeah, I mean, you've got to believe, Dan, that, you know, going for a... Yeah, he really went for that. A submission like that, you're going to have that last bit of adrenaline pump. And now, Sean Fraser back on top, chipping away. And I think Fraser's going to be very, very happy to, to see out the rest of this fight. I'm just over a minute left now. Mark Goddard you know, saying that he needs to see action if Sean Fraser wants to keep his spot here. And we might see, if Pell can muster the energy, we might see Pell try and bring a butterfly hook back to the inside, transition back to half guard, use the underhook to stand. But I have a feeling we might not. You see the way that Pell's body is bent slightly as he's being pushed against the fence there? That's going to really disrupt his ability to, to move his hips and get his body in the right position. Again, left hand underhook, but he, he gets it shut off and 
almost has his back taken off of it. 30 seconds on the clock here in London. A spirited effort from both these young men. Oh, this has been a really, really great back and forth uh, fight the entire way through from the first round to the last. Final seconds of the round now. Pell's not going to be able to get up here, I don't think. Underhook being utilized still right to, oh, the, he is. to the finish bell. Both I mean, these guys. 10 out of 10 for effort for both these guys. 100% leaving it all in the cage tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of mixed martial arts action, we go to our judges' scorecards. No judges score this contest. 29-28, 30-27, 30-27. In favor of your winner by way of unanimous decision. In the blue corner, Sean.